So there's a lot we know and a lot we don't know here. Can I start with the transmittability or the spread, rather, of this variant so far? So we know it's in some countries in Southern Africa. We know it's in Hong Kong. I think I saw uh, cases of it, uh, of it elsewhere as well, at least in one other country. Uh, can we assume it is much further spread than we've already identified? Are we always playing catch up with this virus? Unfortunately, that's very often the case. When it comes to these variants, by the time that they've spread enough, that they start being detected by surveillance systems, they're usually more widespread than we think from those first few samples. And we'll probably hear in the next few days that it's been detected in a few more countries. Of course, there's a big difference between having a few cases in other countries around the world and having widespread transmission. And that'll be what we start to pick up in the next few days, how many times it's been exported and whether it's transmitting locally. I think it's really hard to say right now whether this new variant is much more transmissible or maybe just a little bit. One thing to keep in mind is that cases have actually been pretty low recently in South Africa, which means this variant may not have had to directly compete against Delta. We'll, of course, be learning more about this in the next few days and figuring out whether this does seem to be something that's comparable to Delta in transmissibility or whether it might be more on the immune evasion that's the concern and that it might not be more transmissible. This is what we have to wait for more data to know. So that's what we have to wait for more data on. We uh, also heard from the World Health Organization. They say it will take several weeks to determine the impact of the variant. There's the transmittability, but there's also the severity of the disease that is caused, Emma. Do we know anything about that yet? Unfortunately, we don't. Even though there's been a few hundred people identified in South Africa that have this variant, this is data that's just coming in new. And for a lot of people, of course, coronavirus is not that dangerous. They don't have very severe symptoms. They may be asymptomatic, especially if they're young. And so we have to keep this in mind. This is why it can be difficult to say. If this has spread, perhaps particularly among a group of young individuals, that may not tell us a lot about whether this is a threat, for example, to people with existing conditions or to older people. This is why we often have to wait for larger data points before we can really tell if there's a different clinical outcome. Emma, you're a scientist, so were you surprised at all by this, given some of the vaccination inequity between places like South Africa and the Western world? I do think this is a really important point to talk about right now. The total vaccine coverage for people who've had both jabs in the South, in South Africa is only about 28%. That's much, much lower than even some of the worst vaccinating countries in Europe. And this does mean that the virus has new opportunities. For the virus to make new variants, it has to be able to spread and transmit. The lower we keep that transmission, the less chance we have of seeing dangerous new mutations. And so I think we do have to talk about, while we have this vaccine in equity around the world, you know, are we opening the door and, and giving the virus the opportunity to discover these new variants? And could we be preventing this by making stronger efforts to get vaccines out to countries like South Africa? Of the vaccinations we have now, though, as the virus is allowed to mutate into more and more different forms, will those vaccines become less effective? This is the question that I think everyone is really concerned about. One thing I really want to emphasize is that it's incredibly rare that we have some mutations that make a vaccine completely useless. That's something that we generally don't see. It's more a question of, do the vaccines become slightly less effective? Similar to what we've seen with the immune waning, for example, in people that had their second vaccine six or more months ago. So I really want to emphasize that it's very unlikely the vaccine will stop working entirely, and the vaccine will still probably give you a considerable amount of protection. It's more about whether that protection is, is decreased enough that it's really concerning and whether, for example, we need a new formulation vaccine booster to get that protection up to where we like it to be high in the 90s. But even 60, 70% protection is better than nothing.